there are two fundamental questions that we really need to ask ourselves every Erev Yom Tov, every Erev Shavuos, but certainly this year. And the first question is, what is it that we are celebrating? The fact that we were given the Torah, it was amazing. But, as we all know, the Gemara tells us in Menachas that Moshe Rabbeinu breaks the Luchos and says the Gemara, Bitula zehu yisuda. Moshe Rabbeinu, by breaking the Luchos, broke the contract. The Gemara calls it, he was mevatel. He annulled, he cancelled the giving of the Torah. And Hashem made him write a new set of luchos, which we received on Yom HaKippurim. So what do we have today to celebrate? Surely that was cancelled. And perhaps we should celebrate Yom HaKippurim as the real day of Matan Torah. That's the first question. And the second question, of course, is that the date is wrong. The day is wrong. Asks the Maharsha and others. Whichever way you look at it, there is a machlekas between Rabbi Yossi and the Chachomim as to exactly which date the giving of the Torah was. But whichever way you look at it, one thing they all agree on, and that is that the Torah was given on the 51st day of the Sphira. Not day 50, but day 51. And undisputably, we always celebrate Shavuos on the 50th day. So what's going on? We have two questions. Let's see whether we can use Yitzchak Ovinu to give us the answer. And the connection between Yitzchak and Shavuos might seem surprising, but it's a very real one. The first thing is that the Torah tells us in Hilchas Rosh Chodesh that Pesach corresponds to Avraham, Shavuos corresponds to Yitzchak, and Sukkot corresponds to Yaakov. And indeed, the shofar of Matan Torah was the shofar from the isle, from the ram that was brought up after the Akedah. But it goes deeper than that. The Medrash says that Sinai, Har Sinai, Sinai Ba, it, the Possek says it came from somewhere. Where did it come from? Says the Medrash, Sinai came, Mehar Hamoiria, it came from Har Hamoiria. Kechalo shenitla shom min ha'isa, like a piece of challah that was taken away from a big dough. Omar HaKodesh Baruch Hu, Hoyil v'yitzchak of avihem ne'ekad. Since Yitzchak, their forefather, was bound on the, as the Akedah on that spot, it is appropriate that Kalal Yisrael receive the Torah, as it were, on that spot. And therefore, Har Sinai paid a pilgrimage, a visit to Har Hamoiria, and took something away from it, Kechala, from the dough, and therefore it became an appropriate spot upon which Kalal Yisrael would receive the Torah. What on earth is going on? The very first time that we encounter the date of Matan Torah in the Torah is when Moshe Rabbeinu sees HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the burning bush, in the snare. And Hashem says to him, when you take my people out from Mitzrayim, Ta'avdun eshoeloikim al hohor hazeh. They shall serve me on this mountain. So here is the very first description, definition of Shavuos. It is a day of ta'avdun, a day of avoida, service. What is this avoida? Let's try and answer these questions. The Maharsha, in the beginning of Avoida Zara, says an amazing idea. He says that as we prepared for Matan Torah, we prepared to be Makadish ourselves, sanctify ourselves, to gain an awareness and an appreciation, a respect, a yira, a fear, for the awesomeness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the Torah. And that process was finished on the 50th day of the Sphira. The next day, Hashem gave us the Torah. But for all generations to come, which date would we celebrate? Not the date that Hashem gave us the Torah, but the date that we finished the process of accumulating Yiras Shamayim and becoming worthy of receiving the Torah. That is the date that is significant. Not the day we received the Torah, but the date that we finalize that process of, of gathering Yiras Shamayim. And he says, Ki Yiras Chait Koidem Lechochma Bema'ala Ubizman. Yiras Shamayim supersedes, it is preeminent, primary, over wisdom, both in quality and indeed in time. Says 
the Bayer Hetev, one of the primary Mepharshim on the Shulchan Aruch. And he says, with this he says, Pshat, in a beautiful Gemara, Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef said about himself, he said, Ilav hayoyma de kogorim kamo Yosef ikka Were it not for the fact that this special day of Shavuos, there would be many Joes, Yosef ikka I would just be another Joe. But this day of Matan Torah is, has made me who and what I am. And Rashi, in that Gemara, says a beautiful commentary. Rashi says, Shalomadati Torah v'nisrei mamti. I learned Torah and I was elevated. If ato b'chartonu mikol ha'amim is Pesach, you chose us from all the nations, then v'roi mamtonu is, you were elevated us, was Matan Torah was Har Sinai. Says the Be'er Hetev. He says, Rav Yosef was a very humble person. The Gemara says that Rav Yosef had Anova. Anova, how humility brings to Yerash Shamayim. If you have Yerash Shamayim, then you can receive the Torah. And it is this day, Hayoma, like the Marashah says. This day, not the next day. We would anticipate having Matan Torah on the day the Torah was given. The fact that we celebrate, rather, the day when we gained Yiras Shamayim, says Rav Yosef, that is what helped me become who I am. But let's take this a little bit deeper. The Gemara says that in the Oren HaKodesh there were a number of artifacts, but two of them which are really relevant for us are Shivrei Luchos, the Luchos Munochim Ba'orin. The second set of Luchos and the first, the, the fragments, the shards, the broken pieces of the first set of Luchos are in the Oroin. Why? Why are the broken bits of the first set of Luchos in the Oroin? What purpose do they serve? They were broken, they're finished. Surely the, the heavenly script was Poireach, the Oisios Porchos. The, the the letters flew away. There was nothing left in them. Why do they remain? This is an incredible metaphor. These were pieces of stone, special stone. We don't know what they were. The Rabbeinu Shalom himself created them, wrote on them. They had his script on them. And then the letters that Hashem himself had written, they flew away. What was left? Stone, blank, nothing. Why do they retain Kedusha? Says the Gemara, if you see a Talmud Chacham who forgets all of his learning and knows nothing now, treat him with respect. He is still worthy of respect. Why? Says the Gemara, because Luchos v'shivrei Luchos monochim ba'orin. Because from the fact that we see that those broken pieces of Luchos, which are now blank, no more impression upon them, no Torah in them, but they are still holy. They are the Luach that once had a huge amount of Torah in. They are still holy and they have a place in the Oren. So a Talmud Chochem that forgets all of his learning through no fault of his own, we should add. Le'oinsoi, says the Gemara, he retains Kedusha. Says Rabbi Michal Zilba, a genius idea. Where do we find in Gemara somebody who lost his learning, who forgot his learning? Says the Gemara in the Dorim, Rav Yosef, none other than this Rav Yosef. He became weak, he became ill, and he forgot all of his learning. And tragically, he had to sit at the feet of Abaya, who was his student, and Abaya would remind him, Rebbe, this is what you taught us, because he could remember nothing, he knew nothing, but he was still the Rebbe, a Rebbe who knows nothing. What an amazing idea. And more than that, the Gemara says in Horeus that Rav Yosef is known as, wait for it, Sinai. He is called Sinai. Why is he called Sinai, says the Gemara? Because he was an incredible Boki. He had encyclopedic knowledge as opposed to Rav Yosef, as opposed to Rabba. Rabba was Oiker Horim. Rabba was a lambda and he could, he could learn deeply and analyze and think. Whereas Rav Yosef contained, his brain contained huge amounts of knowledge. He was a Sinai. Think about what that word means. He was Sinai, he had loads of knowledge. And that makes the question even greater. What is the point of having a Sinai? What is the point of having a computer whose hard disk has been erased? 
What is the point of having a Rav Yosef et Talmud Chacham who's forgotten everything? He did not, doesn't have a deep analytical mind. All he has is knowledge, and that has now gone. But that remains. In other words, there is something that goes beyond, deeper than just the knowledge. And this is what Rav Yosef was celebrating on Shavuos. Because Torah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives to us, Bematana. Moshe Rabbeinu says the Gemara went up to Shemaim for 40 days and Hashem kept teaching him Torah and he kept forgetting, teaching and forgetting until eventually HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave him the Torah, Bematana, as a gift. Torah is a Matana, but Yiras Shemaim. But acquiring the Midas, the perspective, the appreciation, any hard work that we do to become who we are, that remains with us and for us forever. That is transformational. That now becomes who we are. And that is what we celebrate on Shavuos. We celebrate the day, day 50, the day that we became ready, elevated, and nobody and nothing can take that away from us. You can even go and break the Luchos, and we have to get a new set. And the Torah comes back then, but we're not celebrating the Torah. We're celebrating that we made ourselves ready and prepared for the Torah. We acquired an oitzer of Yiras Shamayim. And through engaging with Torah, through the hard work, Nisroi Mamti says, Rav Yosef, I became elevated, I became a different person. And nobody and nothing can take that away from us. Yitzchok Ovinu taught us to be Moiser Nefesh. Ta'avdun Esho Eloikim Al Hohor Hazeh. To engage in Avoida Sashem. To be Moiser Nefesh. And that remains with you forever. Nobody and nothing can take that away from you. And that is even something that can rejuvenate and renew, renew you. And here is one more beautiful link to Yitzchok Ovinu. What happened to us on Matan Torah? HaKadosh Baruch Hu spoke to us, he engaged with us directly, we plugged into the mainframe and we died. Nafshi Yotzo Badabroi, we couldn't contain it. And then Hashem spoke to us again and he brought us back to life. Without going now into why he did that, but where have we heard that before? Says the Medrash, says the Pirkei Durbeleza in Perak Lamad Aleph. Yitzchok feels the, sh the cold sharp steel of his father's chalaf on his neck. His neshama leaves him and he dies. And then he hears, He hears HaKadosh Baruch Hu's voice telling his father, Don't shecht him. Hashem's words rejuvenated him and brought him back to life. He got up. Yitzchok knew that as a result of his Mesiris Nefesh, he experienced and he knew that what he had achieved could not be taken away from him. Not even death could cheat him of that. He knew Tchias HaMesim Min HaToyra. says the Medrash at that time, Posach Omar, he composed a new brocha, Baruch Ata Hashem Machaye HaMesim. And that is what we achieved on Matan Torah. Why did Hashem need to, us to go through that process? It's to teach us. One of the reasons is that when and if you put in the hard work, and this is the key point, Ta'avdun Esoele Kim, Torah is not meant to be easy. It's not meant to be easy to be from. Anything that is worthwhile involves hard work. Getting up for davening in the morning, working on my midas, learning, all the effort. It's not meant to be easy. We're not looking for a way out for an easy life. But number one, it is incredibly rewarding. And it, and only it, transforms and changes you and elevates you. And that stays with you forever. Nobody and nothing can take that away from you. And that is what we celebrate on Shavuos. And especially this year, when we are limited in many different ways, look into our own world and say, what is my avoider? What is going to be my Mesiris Nefesh? How am I going to show the Rabbi Nishleilam that Torah and everything it stands for and its values and its way of life are central and are key to who I am 
if we undertake that, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, says the Gemara, the Yerushalmi, Va'asisem, when we bring the Korban, it doesn't say you bring a Korban, it says Va'asisem, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to each and every one of us on Shavuos. I will remake you anew. You will become a new barrier, something new, a new person capable of achieving so, so much more with one condition. Ta'avdun esorikim. Accept. Accept to work hard, to help transform yourself, to become bigger, to become better. And then this Yom Tov will be the best shavuos of your life. Good Yom Tov.